Back in 2007, I had a band call me up. They're called Parmalee. I'd heard of them. They're from North Carolina. The singer Matt calls me up and said, hey, uh, I want to come down and meet with you, me and one of the guys in the band, and talk to you about working together. I said, sure. The next week, they come down. They fly down, actually. And they come to my studio, and we start talking. They tell me their story. And I know they had been a band playing out for, I don't know, 10 years or so at that point. I said, well, let me hear a couple of your songs. So the singer Matt takes his acoustic guitar, starts playing me a couple songs. I said, oh, those are cool. I said, do you have anything new that you're working on? And he plays me the beginning of this chorus. Feels like Carolina. I was like, oh, that's good. We should work on that. Now, I had never worked with a country band before. Never. I'd never written a country song, never produced a country song. And when you hear Matt's voice, he's obviously a country singer, even though they were kind of a hard rock band. They take off, come back a couple weeks later. He and I sit down. We start working on that song. We finish it in pff, no time. And we end up tracking four songs. I mixed them a week later. I sent them to him. And then I don't hear anything from the band really for about three years. And then it was in um, 2010. One of my buddies said, did you hear about that band Parmalee? I said, no, what, what, what's up? I remember those guys. Well, the drummer got shot in the band after a gig was, was robbed. And the, the singer and the drummer, they're brothers. And uh, Matt is the singer and Scott is the drummer. One of the guys put a gun to the singer Matt's head. His brother was standing behind him he reached down into a bag pretending to get the money and he pulled out his gun after the first guy had fired into the floor to make them realize they meant business. And I think they fired 10 shots between them. The one guy with the gun fell over dead in the RV. Scott was hit three times. And then the second guy ran out in the parking lot and fell over too. He was shot as well. Scott was flown to a hospital near there they gave him a 5% chance of surviving. His heart stopped three times, I think. Matt, the singer, who was in between them shooting guns, there were 10 shots fired in this RV. Well, he couldn't hear for 90 minutes. Well, Scott ended up surviving incredibly. And six months later, if you can believe it, they were back out playing gigs. So three more years go by. I hadn't heard anything from them. I hadn't heard from them since 2007. And I get an email from the singer Matt and he says, we're signed to this country label and they're going to release that song we wrote together, Carolina, as our second single. And they're going to put a lot of money behind it. And I thought to myself, okay, I've heard this before. I said, cool, send me a copy of the new version. So he sends me a copy of the new version, which Sounds pretty similar to the old version, except it's down a half step. Check it out. Home is where my heart is still beating. And I don't know when I'll see her again. I hate to see her cry when I'm leaving. But now I'm a thousand miles away again. And she feels like Carolyn. Now, I know what some of you are going to say. Oh, my God, I hate that kind of music. Well, what was going on in country at the time was this bro country. You know, pickup trucks, girls, drinking beer, all this kind of stuff. That was the the bro country movement that happened for years where all the songs were 1, 4, 5, 6 or 4, 1, 5, 6 or whatever. The four chords of country music, which actually... This song isn't that. As a matter of fact, this song actually has a modulation in the bridge. So far away, no matter how far I go, you know I can't stop thinking about her. And there's nothing like the way I feel, the way I feel when I'm beside her. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh,
when they told me that they were going to put a lot of money behind this, I was thinking like, that's not even a, that's doesn't even sound like a country song. And I've heard it a million times. Uh-huh, the label's going to, we're going to make a video, we're going to do all this stuff. Well, they did make a video. There it was, right? So a couple months after that, I get a phone call from this guy, Kim Stevens. He was the guy that hooked me up with the band in the first place. If you sign us tomorrow, what would you do with us? He said, well, I'd send you to Atlanta to work with this guy, Rick Beato. I said, who's that? He said, well, he's a producer in Atlanta. I said, okay, cool. Thank you. Thanks for coming. As soon as I got home, got on the computer, found his number, called him up. I said, I'm Matt with the Spam Parma Lee. Uh, I'll, I'm going to be there this week. I'm going to come see you. And we, Barry and I got on a plane, and we, we flew down. Um, on our own dime, we rented a car and went in the studio and, and uh, we had a couple songs. The guy that they're talking about that told them to come down here to work with me, his name is Kim Stevens. He signed the band Need to Breathe and connected me with them, who I made three records with. So the guy that connected me with Need to Breathe, who had three gold records that I produced, also hooked me up with Parmalee. So Kim calls me up and he says, you're going to have a number one song. I said, what? How do you know that? He said, well, the song is number nine on the charts, and I did the calculations, and in the first week of December, it should hit number one. I'm looking at the songs that are moving up, the songs are moving down, and it's going to get there. I said, are you sure? He goes, I've been doing radio for 25 years. I know when a song is reacting. Right after I got a call from Kim, a guy from Sony Publishing, which I was signed to, calls me up, but from the Nashville office. I'd never met anyone there. I'd never worked on any country music before. Calls me up and says, I want you to come up here and write with some country writers. Your song's going to go number one. I said, okay. So I go up there. I meet the guys there at Sony Publishing in Nashville, and they start setting me up on writing sessions with all the top country songwriters. Everyone I wrote with had had multiple number one songs. These are all the A-list people. And then it happened. As you can see, on December 8th, 2013, Carolina hit number one on the charts. And then the next week, December 15th, it was again number one for a second straight week. The single also sold a million copies. Well, let's back up for a second. This is what my demo of the song sounded like. She feels like Carolina, looks like California. So another thing that happened with these guys is that someone else had covered the song and was going to put it on their record. They had recorded it. The guys in Parmalee, I, I think it was, they were the backup band. This other guy sang it. That particular artist made a record and then their label went out of business. So the producers were the ones that got the singer Matt to come in and sing the song himself. So follow the story here. The band comes down because some A&R guy who wasn't going to sign them told them to come and work with me. We get together, we write this song together, Carolina, and then it just sits on my hard drive. They put it out, I guess, on, on an EP or something up in there in, in uh, North Carolina there. Three years go by, the drummer almost loses his life in this robbery thing. The band goes through all that. Then... Someone else cuts the song. Then that guy's label goes out of business. Then the band cuts the song again. And they miraculously get a record deal. So we're talking the song is from 2007. The band gets signed. And this song comes out in 2013. For six years, it sat on my hard drive in the studio. If that's not an insane story, this is so unusual. To have something like this happen. It's almost impossible to get a song on a record as a writer anyways, let alone to have a band that doesn't have a record deal have write a song with them and then years later they're still a band and then they get signed and then they produce the record and then somebody puts half a million dollars behind it. That's why the music industry at that time and pretty much up until now was all luck. That's all for now. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're a first time viewer, ring the bell. That'll let you know when I go live and when a new video comes out. Give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment. That's very important. If you're interested in the Beato book, go to my website at www.rickbeato.com. Follow me on Instagram at rickbeato1. Check out the new Beato ear training program at beatoeartraining.com. And if you want to support the channel even more, think about becoming a member of the Beato Club. Thanks for watching.